In this video, uh, we will describe what is uh, k-means clustering. K-means clustering is uh, one of the centroid based uh, clustering category. Um, uh, like we saw a two type of major category of clustering techniques, one is centroid based or continuity based. K-means is actually from the centroid based clustering algorithms. Let us look at this data. Uh, it is a response of three point Likert survey of uh, having 10 questions. Uh, Ignore the x axis of uh, the numbers or y axis, consider this is a scatter plot you have. And uh, this is plotting basically the students uh, say the average score or the score they uh, given or addition of score something like that. So, there are say we collected around 200 students called 3 point uh, like it's case survey questions you are plotting in a scatter plot. You want to see whether uh, these uh, students um, this student's uh, survey uh, has some clusters. For example, um, if it is a 0, 1, 2, if it is a number, consider a student ID, you want to see among the students um, is, there a, is there a cluster, is there a, is there a, a pattern, is there, can you group them into something. Uh, if we ignore the x axis, consider this is the uh, scatter plot you have, you can form clusters. So, how many clusters can we make from this data? If you want to group them into say n groups, 2 groups or 3 groups, 4 groups, how many clusters can you form from this data? So, let us say we have 2 random points, uh, there are 1 point here, there are 2 point here, the 2 random points. And uh, so, we can create a clustering moving these random points over this figure and uh, 2 random points means I am trying to create a 2 clusters from this plot. Okay? So, what it happens is uh, it tries to identify uh, the nearest point uh, to the center and all the, the point near to the center will be considered as a cluster and all these points near this center will be considered to another cluster. After creating a two clusters, uh, it identifies again the mean of all these values, the mean value will be uh, the centroid value for the new cluster. So, then it iterates further further uh, until it reaches the convergent point then it creates a 2 cluster. So, let us see how this 2 random points uh, vary. So, uh, consider 2 points has been moved here and this can be 1 cluster, this can be 2nd cluster. Okay? Let us see what is this distance and how this distance is calculated. Consider this 3, uh, this data, okay? consider this data and uh, we have seen this data in a previous classes. Okay? Uh, we have students attendance and uh, students uh, midterm marks. Okay? Uh, we do not know uh, what is the NSM mark or anything. So, we have students midterm marks, the attendance still midterm marks, we have the uh, plotted in a scatter plot. We would like to cluster them uh, because, because it is unsupervised learning and we do not know what we are trying to predict. We want to know what is happening with the, some students who are getting low score. Is there a pattern exists between attendance versus uh, midterm marks? We, we do not know, but we have some hypothesis. Might be a pattern with attendance and midterm marks. Can we check it? So, let us see these are the students plots. I randomly selected 3 points. So, I said 3 is my cluster. So, I wanted to create 3 clusters. Uh, randomly selected 3 cluster points. So, point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3. Remember that I have only 2 variables here. If we have more than Two variables like 3, 4, 5, uh, we are collecting more variables, you cannot plot it and see how many clusters to come up with. So, let us consider the example of uh, 2 variables in this plot and uh, see how this clustering works. So, I randomly selected 3 uh, random points and uh, these random points um, are here. So, what happens is this, this random point is select checking the distance between all the available data points. Okay? this random point, uh, this is a centroid, first centroid. So, the k is 3, there are 3 clusters, 1, 2, 3. So, I put 3 clusters uh, in this data. So, each cluster centroid, this calls cluster centroid. Okay? This cluster centroid measures the Euclidean distance between all the data points in the figure. Okay? So, when it measures the Euclidean distance between this point and also the same point is measured Euclidean distance between this centroid. Okay? This centroid nuclear distance is large, this centroid nuclear distance is less. So, what happens? This, this point will be considered as a uh, part of this cluster, not this cluster. Similarly, this particular data point is very near to this centroid compared to this centroid. So, this will be formed as a one cluster. Okay? For example, this, this nuclear distance of this is near compared to this. So, this will be another cluster. 
So, how to identify the Euclidean distance? So, what is Euclidean distance? So, Euclidean distance is a point uh, distance between centroids and data points is computed by this formula. Uh, so, C is the centroid. Uh, so, this is C1, uh, consider this is C1 and this is C2 and uh, this is C3. Uh, and the x may be x1, x2, x3 and all the points ok, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and other points. So, x will be this x1 to n, it is number of data points you have. So, you have to compute a Euclidean distance between each uh, x1 to n to uh, c1, c2, c3. So, this Euclidean distance is computed. So, what is Euclidean distance? Um, in a, in a plot, if you want to compute Euclidean distance, uh, this is actually the vector distance between these two. Uh, if you know how to find vector distance, it is simple. Uh, it is like, um, so why the mod? Because it can be negative and squared, so we do not care. So, that is the squared Euclidean distance. Uh, Let us see how this compute the Euclidean distance between two points. So, there is a point here, uh, there is another point here. If you want to find the Euclidean distance, um, we have to compute the Euclidean distance from here, the straight angle, right? So, it, the distance, the minimum distance between these two points. But we do not know how to compute. So, simple Euclidean distance actually considers this, ok. So, 90 degree. So, we know the distance between these two points in the x axis, right? And also we know the values of x1 and x2, y1 and y2. Uh, this is a right angle triangle. Now, you know how to compute the value of this if you know, if you know the value of these two because x2, x2 minus x1 is this, y2 minus y1 is this value. So, you know how to compute it. So, this is how you are compute the Euclidean distance. So, that is it. It is simple to do. So, yeah, check it out if you if you are not uh, came across this term called Euclidean distance. It is very simple to compute and it is logical intuitive also to compute distance. There are other distances to compute not just Euclidean distance in clustering, uh, Manhattan distance or some other distances. But um, let us see we use uh, Euclidean distance for this clustering technique. So, what happens is um, uh, the center uh, it, it computes the Euclidean distance of all the points, uh, then whichever uh, the point which is near to the cluster, it will be considered to be that cluster. So, let us see the next point. So, after it picked three points, uh, what happens is, um, let us look at back. So, consider um, so, consider uh, it these three these three points are considered to be one cluster and these are part of another cluster and this these are all near to this cluster ok. So, this particular centroid uh, these three points are near to this centroid, these points are near to this centroid and these points are near to this centroid. So, based on that value uh, the three clusters formed. After you do that, uh, the new centroid will be computed by finding the average value of these four points. So, there will be average value of these four points. Using the four points average, the new centroid will be computed. New centroid might come here. The sign 3, 2 will move here. Similarly, these three points, if you compute the average of this variables, it might come here. C1 might come here. Similarly, this if you compute 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points and the new centroid might be somewhere here. So, this will be moved here. So, the new centroid of this cluster will be C1 here and C2 here and C3 here. So, that is how the three clusters uh, formed. So, the first step is uh, you find compute the Euclidean distance of centroid to all the data points. After creating, uh, after finding the data points which is new to the centroid, you compute the new centroids based on the clusters values that is a mean value. So, now the centroids is moved here. After moving this uh, again compute uh, again compute the Euclidean distance of centroids to all the data points. Obviously, these three points um, these three points are very close to this. So, this is one cluster and these, these points are very close to this cluster and uh, maybe so this is close to this cluster. So, there are three clusters formed as of now. Again, if you compute the centroid, uh, if you try to compute the mean of these three points and move, it is already the mean computed. So, there is nowhere to move, it is already in the central place. So, if the centroid is not moving, then you stop uh, iterating, ok. That is where you have to stop saying that hey, there is no change in centroid movement 
or there is no change in uh, changing the one data point one cluster to other cluster then you can see stopping. If that not happens, so you say a small threshold value if uh, centroid is ok moving with this limited threshold it is ok keep it out. Because some cases uh, we do not get the exact clusters uh, from the I k means clustering algorithm. So, you can have a threshold value it is ok one or two points can move and I want to stop it ok or you can say I want to iterate over 100 iterations I do not want to do beyond 100 iterations that is fine. So, you can stop based on number of iterations or with some threshold or no change in movement of centroids ok. So, this one cluster, two cluster, three clusters formed. Uh, now, I hope you know what is k means clustering uh, it is uh, actually uh, trying to uh, find the means of the data points uh, from the three centroids or number of k centroids we give. Why can't you go ahead and uh, list down the steps uh, we saw in the clustering operation in previous slides. List down the steps like first step what is the first step in your own words does not matter what you write. So, in your own words uh, the first point is randomly assign k clusters 1 or 2 or 3 k clusters. Then uh, then you do the uh, Euclidean distance and do uh, move the centroid. So, write down how, how do you move the centroids write down those steps. After writing it down resume the video to continue. I hope you would have written down the k means algorithm this is the algorithm of k means. Um, first step is select the value of k. So, the k can be 2, 3 or anything um, why we have to pick 2 or 3 why which number is good we will talk about that. And uh, after selecting the value of k uh, randomly assign the k points. So, the centroid the initial centroid points are randomly assigned ok that is a key ok remember this. Uh, I select k value equal to true or 3 then I randomly assign this uh, k points uh, centroids maybe in one corner or it can be randomly split in, in the chart. After that compute Euclidean distance between the k points to other points to other data points compute all then move create a cluster which is near to the centroid ok the, all the points which are near to the centers are created to create a former cluster. After you create a cluster compute the centroid that is uh, compute the centroid the center value that is a mean value or center value of all the data points in the cluster that will be the new k point ok that centroid is moving to the average or the center of this all this data points that is a new uh, k point. So, you have to compute a centroid again of the data points of the newly uh, formed clusters and uh, that kind of centroid will act as a new uh, centroid new k point. So, now the number of cases is still same ok the number of cases is not reducing we are just moving the centroid here and there. Repeat again repeat this process again until you uh, see the errors values is very less uh, there is no uh, oh, there is no change or, uh, or you have set in, in uh, 100 iterations or 50 iterations. So, repeat the points uh, like uh, the computing the Euclidean distance and compute the centroid again and again till you reach the uh, no change in the centroids or uh, the number of iterations reached ok. This is the k means algorithm this is the basics of k means algorithm. If you written down this um, that is right you already understood the k means algorithm. If not please go and watch the video again or go to internet and check the resources there are some good simulators available to show how this k points are moved how they is computed. So, check those videos ok. Then now we have to see how to select the correct number of k I said that hey, there is a k can we select 2, 3, 4 or what is the number you want to select. So, in order to select the correct number of k first you have to identify the uh, error function or the objective the objectives keep the, the error function is what is this error function what is the objective say let us consider the objective is j ok the error function value is g. It is actually the distance between centroid and the data points after you complete the after you complete the iterations after you say you set up with the a there are 3 clusters I am not changing anything after you compute it suppose for example say let us see. So, ok this is a centroid this is the centroid and this is the centroid. So, the three centroids ok there are three centroids um, uh, ok the 1, 
to three centroids. In each centroid, okay, so let's see the three centroids, it's only one, uh, it's just high, okay, I don't know, it's just high. And uh, just high, okay. Um, within uh, the three centroids, okay, and uh, there will be a lot of uh, data points uh, in this cluster. In this cluster, there might be like three data points. So, compute uh, distance between centroid and data point. So, compute the distance between centroid. So, summation of all this distance. So, C1 uh, to x1 plus summation is like a C2 to x2 plus C3 to x3. The distance between centroid and x1 and x2, x3. So, there are 23 points. So, this cluster has uh, number of uh, data points in ith cluster is 3. So, here C i is 3, here there are 4 points, so here C i equal to 4, here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points, so C i equal to 5. So, first you iterate here and you identify for cluster 1, I identified 1 values plus for cluster 2, uh, what is the cluster 2 um, that um, I equal to 1, 2 cluster 2, the distance between the centroid and point, this cluster distance between the centroid and data points. Uh, this uh, error function we call it as error plus i equal to uh, 1 to c 3 and error function. If you have this distance computed you some other thing that is the objective function. So, our objective is to reduce uh, this uh, distance between these clusters uh, as much as possible. Uh, so, uh, you can create more clusters uh, if you more if you create more clusters. Um, the distance might even reduce further. So, just a quick question, um, consider I have 3 points, 4 plus 5, 9 plus 12, 12 data points, right. What if I choose k equal to 12, what will happen? If I choose k equal to 12, uh, like check carefully, right, if you check the rule, there will be 12 clusters, okay, which means the center of cluster is actually the data point. And the distance between data point and cluster is 0, right? If you, total, uh, if you add the data of all these values, it will be 0. So, if you choose uh, k equal to number of data samples, the value will be 0, okay? If I choose uh, only one cluster, okay, only one cluster, then this complete, um, this complete uh, will be one centroid. That value will be the maximum error function, okay? We do not know, we can't say what is the value, it changes based on the data points, but that will be the maximum error function. If you choose k equal to uh, number of data points, it will be 0, okay. So, now uh, what we have to do, uh, you have to uh, compute this j uh, objective function and uh, for, uh, for a clusters k equal to 1 and k equal to 2, k equal to 3, you have to compute for different case, okay. Let us see. If I plotted it uh, for um, uh, cluster 1, 2 clusters, 3, if I computed that previous, what I was saying was sum of uh, squared errors, that is objective function j. If I compute it for k equal to one cluster, this is the maximum value you can get. And if you go, there are like twelve points. Say if it is twelve here, it might be zero. The point might sit here. Okay. So now, if I compute it, uh, I can plot it like that, right? So, how many cluster uh, we should consider? what is the k value, which k value I should pick. That is based on uh, this curve. If you plot this curve, you can say this is an elbow curve, right. So, there is a bend here, there is a kind of elbow, this is your ever elbow. So, this is like our hand elbow. So, this particular, uh, this is like our hand and the elbow point is considered to be the uh, optimum k value. So, for this particular data, you choose k equal to 3, that is the best. Uh, optimal value. So, you can choose k equal to 3, 3 clusters. And um, why we choose that, I uh, will tell you the reason. Uh, for example, for uh, k equal to 1 to 2, um, for k equal to 1 to 2, uh, the difference in uh, sum of squared errors is uh, say some uh, 50, uh, 55 to 80, uh, say the 25 points. For uh, 55 year, say 25 year, this, this difference is 30, but this difference, you know, it is just a 5. 
So, the sum of squared error reduction is really less from 3 to 4. So, that is why we are saying that we will pick the 0.4. So, the sum of squared error will be really less going forward. So, do not pick the cluster equal to 12 which means every data points is the cluster that makes no sense and uh, so pick the cluster which is elbow point. So, k equal to 3. Uh, it is it always worked with this k elbow point here and uh, check it out. Uh, you create your own data and try clustering algorithm and see if this elbow point works or not. So, now uh, I hope you know what is k means clustering and you know how to pick uh, the right k value. And uh, if you understood, um, can you list down two drawbacks of k-means clustering um, based on your understanding? What are the drawbacks? You might ask a lot of questions. Uh, is, is the k is correct? What is this? A lot of questions. What are the drawbacks? Can you list down two of them? After listing it down, resume to continue. So, initial centroids, right? I said uh, you pick k equal to random value, k equal to 2 or 3 and centroids assigned randomly initial centroids. Uh, that is a tricky part because where we are assigning the centroid makes the different type of clusters. Uh, in a two, uh, two variable it is easy to see, but in a three variable or four variable it is really tough. And uh, it would not work for categorical data also for nonlinear data sets. So, to handle that uh, there are techniques. Um, so, what is initial? Uh, So, let us see there are points like this. If my initial centroids, um, my initial centroids I choose three clusters, my initial centroids are here uh, compared to my initial centroids are over here or my initial centroids are here. So, based on where you choose the initial cluster, in the two the two parameter variable it is easy you know wherever you choose it tries to uh, merge converge into particular point consider it is a uh, four dimension or more than that. And uh, the initial centroid where you choose in general matters a lot. To avoid this problem uh, you can randomly select uh, the initial uh, data points and do it for multiple times. So, what I mean is consider for k equal to 2 um, for k equal to 2. Uh, the two random points might be somewhere here when you assign it. So, iterate the k equal to 2 multiple times. Uh, check if your k equal to 2, uh, if you do the same clustering, same data, say multiple times, say 3 times, 4 times, or 5 times, check the number of clusters or the j value is same, then you stop it. Similarly, for k equal to 3, iterate for 10 times, or k equal to 4, iterate for 10 times. In each time, you have to iterate multiple times to find a right clusters, right centroids that is within the k-means clustering. What I am saying is run the k-means clustering for k equal to 2 multiple times. Okay. So, take k equal to 2 and run the k-means clustering for say 10 times. Similarly, k equal to 3 and 10 times and find which value is most closely pick those value as a j or, or the pick the minimum value or pick the mean value something like that. Then you plot the elbow curve or the bend then you pick the right k. That is the best uh, option we have to avoid the initial centroids issue in the k-means clustering. So, in this video we saw what is k-means clustering and we discussed how to select the right uh, number of k using the elbow curve. So, hope you understood k-means clustering. Uh, if you do not get what is k-means clustering from this video, I recommend you to go and check uh, internet uh, videos, the lot of uh, simulations to explain k-means clustering. I am not talking about the mathematics behind uh, the, the centroid computation and everything because that is not needed for this course. The idea for this course is if you have a data and uh, if you can apply k-means algorithm, you have to understand uh, which k to pick, what is k-means algorithm is, what is clustering means. If you understand what is k-means algorithm, how to pick the number of k, perfect, it is that is enough for this course. But if you want to know more about k-means algorithm, please refer the to data in the website. Thank you.